and welcome to On the Couch with Fouch. My name is Matt Fouch. I am the host of this show. If you're watching on Facebook, please make sure you like my page. Also like, comment, and share this interview. And if you're watching on YouTube, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button and that you're getting notifications so that you don't miss any of the future releases that I do. Also want to let you know if you want to get emails so that you make sure they come to your email box so that you don't miss the new videos, you can go and sign up for that at onthecouchwithfouch.com. Now, this interview is going to feature my friend and bluegrass sensation artist, Darren Vincent. I know you guys are going to absolutely love getting to know Darren. So without further ado, here's Darren on the couch with Fouch. Welcome to the interview. This is On the Couch with Fouch. I have Darren Vincent with me today. He is in bluegrass music, if you're not familiar. I can't imagine many of you wouldn't be familiar, <laughs> but if you're not, he's with a group called Daily and Vincent, and we're going to get into all of the, the awards, the, the songs, the all the touring, the groups you've been with for a little bit, but what I love hearing about the most in these interviews, man, is just about your faith and about your family. Okay. So would you share a little bit about your family and then about what Jesus means to you? Absolutely. Um, grew up in a family group in Missouri, a little town, Green Top, Missouri. It's where I grew up. And it was my daddy, my mom, my sister, Rhonda. And I've got a younger brother, Brian. There was five of us. And uh, my father, when uh, Rhonda was two, got in a car wreck. Mm. And he was paralyzed from the neck down for a few years or a few wow. months. Wow. And uh, years later, he I was asking about his wreck and things, you know, just trying to put things in place. Yeah. And uh, he told me, he said, when I was uh, laying in the hospital bed paralyzed, he said, I prayed to the Lord. He said, if you'll give me one good leg and one bad leg, he said, I'll drag the, drag, I'll drag the other leg if you just give me one good leg. Hmm. And sure enough, six months later, the Lord let him have one uh, control of one leg and the other one he just could not. Uh, he had to always do this or something to get it to work. Wow. So uh, I came along six years later. There's eight years between Rhonda and I and then four years between my brother and I. So we grew up in a little town of 350 people in Green Top, Missouri. And during that time, uh, my dad's recovery, he really couldn't work anymore. He used to work a shoe factory, and my mom worked a shoe factory up there, floor shine. Hmm. And uh, so dad would play the banjo. And uh, then Rhonda came along and started singing. And I think Rhonda and I are the fourth generation of our family of singing. All of our family sang and played uh, gospel, country, bluegrass music, old time music. It's what we grew up. That's doing. awesome. And uh, but anyway, uh, you know, I've always played and sang since I've been two and three years old. And the first thing, my, uh, the first song I ever sang, my mother said, was I was about eight or nine months old. I started singing harmony to Happy Birthday. No way. I, that's what she tells me. That's amazing. I don't remember, but yeah. That's amazing. But uh, we grew up playing music, like I say, worldwide. But uh, faith was really in my mom and dad's life and our whole family. Uh, my daddy taught me and mom taught me about Jesus. We went to church every Sunday that we were home. And some of my fondest memories of is sitting on the pew, uh, playing with my little Hot Wheels cars, <laughs> listening to my mom and dad. And, Cheerios? Yeah. I don't remember that, but uh, I love the little cars, listening to my mom and dad and Rhonda sing at church on Sunday nights. It was so great. That's awesome. Oh, great stuff. And, of course, uh, I think I was about eight or nine years old. The preacher was talking about going to hell and don't don't die and go to hell and your soul will be lost. Mm. And I, again, I play with Hot Wheels because I was. Now they would they would have me on pills and stuff because I was really AED and just I, I just couldn't I couldn't focus. Are you uh, still that way? I'm better. Okay. Way, now Jamie's worse. But, uh, <laughs> but they got you on the medicine now. No, though, so no, no. Okay. I, I grew up out of that. But, okay. uh, uh, but anyway, uh, I remember him saying that, and I I was and I would talk to my grandmother because we lived there's a house between us, and I would cry because uh, I didn't want to go to sleep. I was afraid mm -hmm. of dying. And yeah. my soul going to hell. And my grandmother would always pray with me every day that I would go up there and spend the night with her or cry or whatever and try to understand what Jesus was. And uh, But I remember I was eight or nine years old and the Sunday night and the preacher said, don't die and go to hell. When I heard that, I, I couldn't sit anymore. Mm -hmm. I had to go put my hot wheel down. And I went ahead. I didn't know what I was doing at the time. Mm -hmm. But I knelt and I said, Jesus, I want you to be my Savior and I don't want to die and go to hell and burn up forever. 
Yeah. And I accepted, accepted Jesus, I think, at nine or eight or nine or ten, somewhere in there. And uh, I followed him all my life. Uh, we've been in church. I haven't done the right things my whole life. But the good thing is I believe in the blood of Jesus as my Savior, and I'm hanging on to that. Amen. Ask for forgiveness, yeah. and I trust that he'll forgive him and not remember anything I've ever done. And once he says, I'll forgive him forever, I believe that. Yeah, and that's that's sometimes a hard thing to grasp onto as sinners is— and, and as humans, forever. Forever. Forget them forever. Like, Hallelujah. Like, I, it's hard to wrap my mind around being able to forget something forever. <laughs> I don't. I can't do yeah, it. I can't either. So I, it, it's it's unfathomable, but it's yeah. part of how great and how amazing and awesome God is. Amazing grace. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. So music, faith has been in your family. It's been in your blood. Yeah. What is the importance of passing that on now as a father to that fifth generation. You talk, I can't believe four generations. Four That's generations. awesome. It is really good. And how, how are you passing that on? Well, I've got a great story. Two of them, actually. Perfect. Um, I was at a festival. I went off a few relationships, and I found my wife in Maine at a festival. And uh, the very first thing I said, I think she still got the letter. I said, I believe in Jesus. Do you? And she, re- she replied, no. Hmm. She did not believe in Jesus. And I said, Why? And her, she was 16, and her daddy died of a massive heart attack on the tw- 22nd of December, and they buried him December 24th. Wow. And she says, I just can't forgive God for ever taking my daddy from me. Hmm. And uh, I said, well, and at the time, I I, in, in, I was a new Christian, and I was trying to get it together. And, and uh, so I started asking my pastor. I said, I've got this girl I really love. I feel like I love, and I want to know her more. And I said— She's saying this stuff. I said, what can I do to... I said, I need answers. So he started giving me scriptures to feed to her. Hmm. And I started slowly, you know, kind of putting the seed there and trying to help her through this hurt that she was feeling. I mean, she was so bad. So uh, anyway, we got engaged. Um, she lived uh, 1,600 miles away from Missouri to Maine. Wow. I moved to Missouri. We lived together in sin. My grandmother had the awfulest fit. She said, you two are horrible to do that. But yet, on Sunday morning, me, me and Julie would pick my grandmother up and take her to church, and she wouldn't mind that, go eat. And I remember one Sunday morning uh, after church, we came home and— uh, <clears throat> she started crying. I said, what is wrong with you? And she says, I want to know Jesus is my Savior. Wow. And we knelt there in our little house in Missouri, and she accepted Jesus as her Savior. Never been out of church since. We got married. We have three children, and all of three of our kids were saved. And mm-hmm. uh, we have followed the Lord ever since. And then uh, about seven years ago, she's pr- principal of a school. And uh, this little girl came in, three years old, in her preschool. And uh, the grandmother had said, I want this kid out of my house. I don't want her in my home anymore. I'm just going to turn her over to the state. Mm. And Julie called me crying. She says, this little girl said, I'm just feeling this tug that we need to do something. I said, I'm not a foster father. I can't do this because I'm very possessive. Once it's Mm -hmm. mine, it's mine. They're my kids. They're my kids. So anyway, she said, well, come to school and just look at her because she ain't got any place to go. And uh, I walked into school and seen this beautiful little girl. <clears throat> and uh, we prayed about it. And it wasn't too long as we went to DC, uh, DCH or DCS, whatever it is, the state thing. And uh, we said, we don't want to be foster kid, fam- family, but uh, if you want to sign the rights over to, you know, to us, we'll take her. Yeah. And uh, the grandmother said, I just want her out of the house. She said, she's trouble. So we took in this little girl, three years old. And uh, uh, long story short, uh, we adopted her. And uh, a year ago, uh, I think it was April the 20th, uh, my oldest daughter, who's 20, she was 21 at the time, came in. She said, uh, Taylor, Taylor, let me talk to you. I said, okay, this is was Sunday morning, getting ready for church, or getting ready to go to church. I hadn't got out of bed yet because I think I, whatever, it's late tonight. But, uh, Gotten in late from a yeah, weekend of travel or something. Where, you know, I thought, what, what does she need? You know, yeah. why would she need to talk to me at like 8 or 9 in the morning? And uh, anyway, Taylor was crying. I said, what is wrong with you? And she says, Daddy, I want to know Jesus is my Savior. 
Wow. And uh, the other three kids I wasn't home for, I was on the road. But for this little girl here that the Lord blessed us with. Yeah, man. We knelt down by the bed and she said, Jesus, I want to know you as my Savior for my life. And come here, baby. Yeah. Bring her up here. This is what she brought. <laughs> she accepted the Lord as her Savior. That's and awesome. I'm so grateful for that, baby. I'm proud of you. That's so, awesome. All of my homes are under the blood. Amen. Yeah. Well, Darren, why don't you take a minute and share a little bit? I know you talked earlier about uh, adoption and yeah. how that's something dear to you. And I yeah. feel like just in this moment, I feel like that's something that um, you can share with these people about and how important that is to you. I will. I just want to say to you personally out there, if you've never adopted or can't have a child or something, you know, I, I hear all the time, well, I want my own child. Well, I'm going to tell you what, when the Lord puts it on your heart to love one of his kids, it's a huge responsibility. And I know that these little ones, they need a home that love them and take care of them. And I know you need a does, but I had no idea how much we needed them. It's one of the most blessed things to be given a child of the Lord's and then to see her accept the Lord. Yeah. It's a really amazing thing. That's awesome. And she was three and you're, you just turned 10, didn't you, baby? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she's 10 years old and as you can see, she's doing really good. She's eating good. And <laughs> <laughs> she's nearly as big as you are. She's, now. <laughs> yeah, she's, I feel like I got a small truck on my lap. But <laughs> <laughs> when you started to pick her up, I was like, I don't know how this is going to go, but hey, it worked out. But anyway, uh, anyway, adoption's a wonderful thing, and it'll change your life forever. So I just want to. You want anything to say? Say anything to, to anybody? No. Mm-hmm. Okay, baby. Sure, love oh. you. I love you. All right. Let me finish this interview. What a cool moment, guys! And that's one of the things about um, uh, this about on the couch with Fouch is yeah. that um, my whole goal is just to capture a conversation. Yeah. But those of you that have watched from the beginning know that anything could happen at any time with yeah. this. When we do these interviews out on location at different events, you don't know what artist is going to walk up behind <laughs> and act a fool, right? Like an opera. Right, right. right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so you just don't know what's going to happen. And yeah. that's one of the most tender heart, heart, uh, heartfelt moments I think we've had on the show. So that's that's awesome. And I hope you guys will, if, if that's something that speaks to you that Darren was talking about with adoption, hope that you'll take that um, serious. And maybe even, who, who can they reach out to? If they're watching, you know, who, who do you think they should reach out to? Maybe just adoption agency in their area or something? Maybe. I really don't know. Uh, I, that's how that happened for us. Yeah. I just think the Lord leads you to a moment. You don't need to, you know, let it go. Yeah. Because that they need these little babies need you. I can't tell you how many times I've heard, "Well, I don't want to adopt. I want my own child." Yeah, she's my child. Right, she's my baby. When we adopted her, that's my girl, and she's a hundred percent mine. Yeah, that's right. It don't matter if Julie had her or my my wife had her or not. She's my baby. That's right. Yeah, and they can be your baby, and they need you. And believe me, it, it'll bless your life for forever. And we have actually changed her entire life. Her life would have been horrible. She would have been abused all of her life. She would have always never, probably been off welfare all of her life because there were six of them. Wow. They've all been out of the house now, adopted, in good families mm-hmm. and good homes. So we've changed her outlook of her whole life. Yeah. And the most important thing that we've changed is she knows Jesus is her Savior. Amen. That's the That's main right. thing. That's and cool. she'll take her household and keep going. That's cool. Well, Let's transition a little bit to Daily and Vincent, man. <laughs> okay. let's, get, let's get to, um, I'm, oh, I've gosh. loved the interview so far. I think yeah. it's, it's been great. Yeah. I want these folks to hear a little bit about <laughs> Daily and Vincent, what you guys are doing, sure. what you got coming up in the future, some of the awards you guys have won. <sighs> yeah. So fill them in, man, on, on right. Daily and Vincent. Well, you know, uh, Jamie Daly, uh, he was with Doyle Lawson for uh, nine years as his lead singer. Wow. And uh, I was with Ricky Skaggs for 11 years. And at the time, we was at the IBMA, which stands for International Bluegrass Music Association. Yeah, it's a big title. I like IBMA. Yeah, it's better. <laughs> a whole lot better. But he was at the award show at Doyle. Ricky and Sharon White and myself, we were all sitting in the audience. Jamie came up and sang a song with Doyle called Be Living. Well, on the course, it's got this real high note. 
And uh, Ricky and Sharon and myself, we were just cheering him on. It's like, wow, what a voice he has. I, after the performance, I went backstage and I put my hand out and I said, I'm Darren Vincent and I would like to be your friend. We exchanged numbers and I had no idea that he lived 30 minutes from me. Wow. So we, uh, it wasn't about, I think a week or two later, we went to Cracker Barrel, had breakfast, and uh, just started talking about the music business and did some recordings together. And lo and behold, a few years later, um, we decided to start our own thing. We said, okay, I've done all I can do with Ricky. He's done all we can do with, with Doyle. So in January of 2007, uh, we gave them a year's notice. No, 2006. No, 2007. <laughs> They all run together after a while. <laughs> but we gave him a year's notice. Said yeah. at the end of this year, we're quitting. We're going to start our own thing. So we did. We gave him a year's notice. And uh, we were our very first paid date was uh, December the 29th, 2007, at the Grand Ole Opry, Ryman Auditorium. Jeannie Seeley brought us out as Daly and Vincent. So that started our career. And we've been, uh, I think we've been 12 years. We've won, I think, 70 or 80 awards, something like that, as Daly and Vincent. Whew. Uh, Dove Awards, four or five of those, wow. which I love, and I've uh, been nominated in three different categories in the Grammys. Never won one of those yet with, with Jamie. I, with Ricky, I was blessed to won five Grammys with him that I have at home. Mm. And then our, I think our biggest moment, uh, bit, you know, sponsored by Cracker Barrel, had our, we had like five CDs in Cracker Barrel. We're currently sponsored by Springer Mountain Farms Chicken out of North Georgia. Okay. Gus Arendelle and the family. But uh, uh, I think it was... Our 100th performance, 10th year anniversary at the Grand Ole Opry, Marty Stewart came out and invited us to be the newest members of the Grand Ole Opry. Wow. And then we were inducted That's by awesome. Jeannie Seeley and the Old Pro Medicine Show on uh, November the 11th of uh, 2017. That's the 213th member of the Grand Ole Opry. And that's our Grand Ole Opry ring that uh, Jamie designed. Let me see that thing. That uh, Gus Arendelle of Springer Mountain Farms. Yeah. He says, I want to give you boys something. That's awesome. Yeah, it's the coolest thing our Opry ring. So we became the members, newest members of the Opry, and that's why I'm so tired today. I was like 1 a.m. last night at the Opry, getting uh, home, and I'm I'm tired this morning. We had a big <laughs> night. Charlie Daniels was there. Little Big Town. It was a huge night at the Opry. So amazing. Yeah, it was a great night. So what is that like? What's that feeling like? Because I'm sure growing up playing music, Opry was a big deal. Is a it big was. thing. And now you're a member. What's that? What is that feeling like? I'm gonna cry again. <clears throat> Well, uh, it, it's the most amazing thing. I've had children. I've adopted children, except the Lord. I would say, besides being born again and the kids, it's right underneath that and getting married. But it, it's one of the biggest honors musically that you can get. Mm-hmm. Uh, every time we're on there uh, performing or hosting the show, it's um, I'm scared to death. My, my knees are shaking. Because, I mean, you've got 4,500 people in the audience, plus you're going around the world mm-hmm. representing the Grand Ole Opry. Jamie's father and mom, you know, was huge fans and all of his family and my mom and dad. And my father died about four years ago. I wish he would have seen us become members. But uh, it's one of the biggest honors ever of our whole life. It's like achieving, you know, this goal. Yeah. And uh, Zach Coffler, Springer Mountain Farms, Cracker Barrel, all these people had really helped us. David Crow, our attorney, helped us get across that finish line to become members. It's a beautiful thing. Cool. Yeah. Cool. What a great, um, I don't know, just a great journey that you've had <laughs> all along the way. One thing that I was curious about, and this this is actually more a little bit about you personally. Uh-oh. I was wanting to know what are the top three things on your bucket list? Wow. Because you marked off a lot of them on that journey, I bet. I have. I, I can't think of any of the things. Uh, you know. You done emptied it out. I really have. I told Julie the other day, I said, if I die today, I've done everything I wanted to do. It's cool. I've been on nine or no ten. Dolly Parton records. She calls us family. Hmm. To have some icon of music like that, to, to, and Vince Gill calls us family. Ricky, I mean, all these people at the Opry now are family. That means more to me than anything. Just having their respect and their love for what we do, Jamie and I and the guys. Uh, that is a huge blessing. I, I can't think of any other thing. Anything now is just it's just gravy. It's bonus to me. <laughs> the gravy on top. Yeah, of it all. That's making cool. sure. I guess my, the bucket list. I just want to make sure my kids have a good future yeah. and, uh, and try to do good things. And so far, uh, my other three our other three children, they're all in education, uh, special ed, trying to help underprivileged children. And I just think that's the best thing that you can do is try to help somebody that can't help themselves. Yeah. It's a wonderful yeah. thing. And Jamie and I started a, a Helping Hands fund uh, that uh, 
a few years back to help underprivileged children of his county in, in Jackson County where he grew up and DeKalb County here in, in Tennessee. And uh, we, we help people uh, get food. Uh, a little girl had broken glasses. So Daly and Vincent Helping Hands bought her glasses. Wow, cool. Uh, we just help people, give yeah. scholarships to, to kids that won't go to college. And so that's what our goal is to try to help others. And I think if you great. can't do that, then it's a great goal, man. You're, you're in a mess. That's right. Yeah. That's right. This is a part of the show where I like to ask you five random <laughs> questions. Okay, this is called the random five. Oh, I'm just gonna, I'm is just that gonna, like Legacy Five? Yeah, exactly. That's what it's from. I want to ask you just five random questions. This okay. is so folks can maybe see like a little bit different side of you in okay. a way. So the first question is, um, which zoo animal do you like the best? Zoo animal? Hmm. I think elephant. Everybody likes the elephant. Okay. Yeah, it's beautiful. What is the weirdest food combination that you've ever had? Uh, sing for your supper. I don't know if you've ever done that at the Ryman. Okay. A series. And I ate, uh, what's that? Th- the flat fish, the, the long, what is that? Is it, I, I don't know. I can't, oh, shoot. I, I, I ate that. The fish, okay. Yeah, that kind of, yeah, I can't think of the name of it, but uh, that, yeah. Okay. It was weird to me. What's the worst advice that you've ever been given? <laughs> oh god. These are putting you on the spot a little yeah, bit. But, uh, but it's... People know when I say this what it's gonna be. Uh when we first started out, uh you'll have to sing at separate breaks when we first started out as Daly and Vincent. Okay. And you'll never get a certain amount of money. Yeah. And that's just not the it wasn't right. And sometimes people just need to learn not to try to predict the future. Yeah, yeah, that just, was completely wrong. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's probably the worst advice I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. How do you spend your mornings? Uh, 99% of the time from home, well, besides driving the bus in the morning, uh, I spend it uh, uh, in the bathtub. I like to read, and I enjoy a soak. So I, I spend most of my time every morning praying, reading the Bible, trying to catch up, Yeah. Uh, praying for friends and family. Texting people saying, "Hey, I love you," that I forget about. Yeah, I try to refocus my my myself of, uh, during the week of a morning from a weekend because I'm just, you know, yeah, you're beat. Yep. So yep. it's just redirecting my heart and my mind back to reality. Mm-hmm. Nickname. Mine. Do you have a nickname? Yes. All right. Handyman. Okay. I fix a lot of things. I do a lot of things. And uh, we had CBs. You remember the old CBs? Yes, yes. And my wife, I had her name as Teacher's Pet. Okay. And my name was the Handyman. Okay. So they, they call me Handyman. There you go. <laughs> handyman. Next time you see him at a show or see him at a show, come up to him and say, hey. now that laugh, that is iconic. It is. That is one thing that I have noticed when we've been around y'all. Yeah. Very few times when uh-huh. we've been around you. Um, that laugh, man. He, People must say something about that laugh every night at the show or something. They say you're a fake most okay. of the time, yeah. And I've said, no, I've laughed, I've laughed like this all my life. I love it. I, when I laugh, I laugh from my toes to my head. You take it and in, I have, Last night at the Opry, we had Dan Tominski, you know, old brother we're out there. Mm-hmm. And uh, we laughed because we had two shows, so we had about four or five hours. We laughed and laughed the, the entire night at the opera. And that's night. why you were up till 1 a.m. Because <laughs> y'all were laughing, telling jokes, yes, stories, well, just loving it. Doing stuff, like you said, coming behind people. Yeah. Oh, my lands. We, we we had a blast. Yeah. Yeah, but I love to laugh. Yeah. yeah. I love his laugh. <laughs> and y'all, y'all have got to go check out Daly and Vincent. Man, this is— hey, the, Hang on a second. Yeah, go ahead. I, my laugh. Yeah. I did a—I a, talked about Jamie on YouTube. It's on my YouTube channel. Okay. It's called Jamie's Lawnmower Story. If you've never seen it, go to the restroom first and then plug that into YouTube. <laughs> I laugh for five and a half minutes. It's on our bus. I'm trying. I'm wow. sitting in my PJs, telling Jamie about Jamie mowing his lawn because he he's <coughs> it's it's wonderful. Jamie's Lawnmower Story on my YouTube. Darren Vincent. And it's just laughing. It's just laughing for five <laughs> and a half minutes. And I'm telling you, I'm laughing with everything I got. That's yeah. cool. It's great. So if you want to <laughs> smile, you need a smile on your face. Go check that out. And where can they catch up with Daily and Vincent? DailyVincent.com. Uh, Daily Vincent, the official Daily and Vincent Instagram. Facebook, yeah, all that stuff. And They're we all, all over got the our own personal stuff. Darren Vincent, Jamie Daly. Cool. Yeah. Now, the last thing I want to do. Oh boy. I want to play a little game. Now you have five cards sitting there. 
and we're gonna we're gonna okay. um, each card Is has this for the drink? yeah that's oh, your right. that's your water. Each card has either a word, a name, um, a phrase. It has something on it. What we're gonna try to do here, folks is we're going to try to have a seamless uh, conversation. But at some point while talking, we have to insert what is on our card into the conversation, into the sentence, and then we'll take turns. So I'll, we'll just start talking, and okay. you try to insert, and then we'll go through all five cards. Make okay. sense? Yeah, just go from the top first. Go from the top okay. down. This could be funny, or this could be uh, Train ex wreck. extremely <laughs> awkward. So... We we have this is the first time we've seen these words. Oh. So I'm just gonna start a casual conversation with you and then you'll go get Man, how's your summer been? Everything been good? It's been a great summer. I love uh, looking outside and look at the, the way the, the Lord has made the grass grow, the flowers grow, hmm. and watching the bumblebees pollinate the flowers and the different trees is great. Cool. Bumblebee? <laughs> <laughs> There it is. Well, well, one yeah. thing about, you know, summer and it winding down, you see all the trees and everything, and then the natural transition. And it, yes, fall. Fall, we go into fall. And at the end of summer, we always have to go to the store and start <laughs> buying all of the stuff for school. I mean, it's just ridiculous, <laughs> It right? is ridiculous. And you get that list from the school, and it said you got to get this, you got to get that, and everything. And one thing I always find just so peculiar mm -hmm. is the glue stick. <laughs> Is, is that it, your name? Is, is that, that even weird? It is it's, weird. I yeah. mean, you got pencils, markers, okay, fine, everything. But the glue stick? I mean, come on. What? Twist that thing up. I'll just go for some Elmer's. What do you think? I think you should. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> <Your turn. laughs> well, I'm short like Sammy Davis Jr. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, what I wonder about... And you're way taller than I am. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. W one thing I do wonder is... Um, did Sammy Davis Jr. ever perform in flip-flops? Do you think he ever did? I don't think he ever did. You don't think so? I mean, it would have been kind of weird. Did he pass away before that point? I don't know. I don't. I mean, I didn't Jesus wear flip-flops? He wore sandals. He <laughs> sure did. Exactly but right. May maybe he was got in his suit. I mean, because they all wore suits and ties back then pretty yes. much, right? Yes, they did. Maybe he got in his suit and tie and he just put on a pair of flip-flops. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Oh, my goodness. I don't even want that Keeping is. this one going. Uh, oh, I got it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we were talking about Sammy Davis wearing flip-flops when yes, he's exactly. performing. And then you, you, the, the, maybe the, the, the ball that does all the lights. The disco ball? Disco ball. Yeah. Makes you want to do the Macarena. <laughs> hey, 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 Macarena. <laughs> that was definitely around after Sammy Davis Jr. for sure. Oh, my God. <laughs> But the disco ball is still here. No, the disco ball is good. But, is. you know, one time <laughs> I was hanging out at a at a dance party. <laughs> and it was After Legacy 5 concert? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> After Legacy 5. And, you know, it was the weirdest thing. I'd never seen anything so weird. But it was a woman that was 11 months pregnant 11? doing the Macarena. Wow. It was really weird. <laughs> that has to go into Guinness Book of World Records. I think she's going to have some kind of record for sure. Wow. Yes, I agree. And you know the coolest thing? Have you seen the new apps for Chick Fil A? Yeah, the where you can order yeah. and sit in your car and they bring exactly. it to you or whatever. I love how that works. And I think one of these days they're going to have robots to bring out the food at some point. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm believing it. Right. Instead of humans, you know, right, they just right. keep doing robots. This robots yeah. that. Yeah, and yeah. one thing that I I do enjoy about Chick Fil A. Yeah. And I, obviously the food, yeah. but the sauce. Oh, my lord! What's your favorite sauce? Polynesian. Polynesian. Yes. Honey mustard. Yes. It is spot on. And another thing, when I think of honey mustard, I also <laughs> think of honey badger. <laughs> and what is a honey badger? Honey, well, honey? you know, you see, it's a really sweet badger. Oh. So the regular badgers, they're really... Like, you don't go near them. They're very <laughs> aggressive. But the honey badger, I mean, oh. he's very sweet and kind and gentle. And, and so, you know, that's awesome. Get you a honey badger, I think. Who is this? I, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Good luck with that one. <laughs> uh, I guess when I go uh, after I leave here, I'm going to go Google Eva Perone. Okay. Or whatever that well, is. I, I know mine, so okay. I'll, I'll do this last one. Okay. You were talking earlier about being on the Opry. Yes. Have you be ever been on the Opry with Taylor Swift? No, I have not. Has she ever been on the Opry? 
I don't know the answer. Oh, that was my last one. But I, 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 per, I will ah. tell you a Taylor Swift story, though. Go for it. She was starting out, she and uh, the, the one that's acting on Hallmark right now, the blonde, I can't think of her name. Beautiful girl. Hallmark is my wife's channel. Not I know. Uh, well, I'm home. Especially I have to watch Christmas it. Yeah. season. Oh, th- th- it's right now. Yeah. In July. Oh. But uh, yay. It was. We were at the CMA at luncheon, and Taylor was there. And dang it, I can't remember this other girl. We got our pictures taken. They put me right by Taylor. And of course, I looked up and I said, "I'd rather be by her. She's way shorter. You know, she's about my size." Mm-hmm. And so I left Taylor's side and went to this other girl's. Which I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot because Taylor's way bigger star, but she's doing great acting. It's great. You, you may have got some some more facial recognition <laughs> or something if people saw you next to Taylor. Probably so. <laughs> but they probably would have noticed that you were much shorter. Oh, very much shorter. I mean, she's like way up there. It's amazing how tall she is. I've never seen her, never met her, so I wouldn't know. Well, our lawyer's friends, and I've got a lot of some friends that work with her, and she's such a sweet lady. That's cool. Yeah. Darren, I have had a blast, man. Thank, Thank you so much for coming over and doing this today. I man. love this, man. Thanks for asking. It's been so much fun. God Guys, bless. check out Daily and Vincent. And follow Darren on Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. And uh, hope you guys enjoy On the Couch with Fouch. And until the next time, see you later.